I'm going to show you how to master Unholy Death Knight in both Raiding and Mythic Plus for Season 4 of Dragonflight, whether that's patch 10.2.6, 10.2.7 or beyond. Starting off with the stat priority for Unholy, the first thing I recommend is always getting a higher eye level and better gear and therefore strength as a priority. The secondary stats don't matter as much as long as you're getting a higher and higher eye level. If you would like to know the priority, however, as a generalization, then it's going to be mastery, then haste, then critical strike, and then versatility. If you're not sure what these stats do, mastery is going to increase the damage done by your undead minions and also the shadow damage that you deal. Haste, of course, increasing your attack speed and also increasing your rune regeneration, one of the core resources we use as an unholy death knight. Crit, of course, increasing the chance to do more damage, and versatility is going to slightly increase damage done and also slightly reduce damage taken at the same time. The talent tree on the left here is for raiding and single target, and the one on the right is for AoE and Mythic Plus in Season 4. But don't worry, I'm going to go through all of these with you and show you why we're taking the important talents, etc. I'm not going to go through every individual talent, nor every spell either, but I am going to show you the really important ones, including, of course, the rotation we'll be doing, so that you're not overwhelmed. Once you are more comfortable, however, I do recommend you take a look back through the spellbook and talents and see how they all work together. But I definitely find it best to first of all master the core rotation and cooldowns before doing that. So what cooldowns do we have then? Well, looking at defensives, we've got the anti-magic zone. It's going to do some damage reduction and prevent spell damage for your entire party wherever it's placed. We've then got Icebound Fortitude. That is a personal defensive that is going to reduce your damage taken. Specifically, Lichborn on the bottom here. Reduce damage taken, increasing our leech, meaning we'll get some health back when we do damage, and also giving us some immunities as well. And lastly, a more offensive cooldown. Empower your rune weapon. Haste, runes, and runic power are all going to be increased, and that is on the weapon enchantment we're using. If you aren't aware, Death Knights actually have something called rune weapon enchantments, and this is done in the main Death Knight area when you create your Death Knight, and it takes you through it in the tutorial. Regarding what rune you want to actually enchant your weapon with then, it's going to be the rune of the Fallen Crusader. Engrave your weapon with a rune that has a chance to heal you of your maximum health and increase strength by 15% for 15 seconds. And again, modifying your rune requires a rune forge in Ebon Hole. That is the area where you start as your Death Knight. Moving then on to the utilities we have, first up we can actually use a battle res, meaning we can resurrect one person in combat, however this is on a long cooldown. We've got Chains of Ice, used to slow targets, Death Grip, used to pull targets to you, Death's Advance, which is going to give you movement speed and nothing can stop you or slow you down, and Mind Freeze. This is our spellcasting interrupt or kick, as it's otherwise known. This is the way that us Unholy Death Knights can actually interrupt our enemies' spellcasting, and it's really, really important. A few other offensive cooldowns that we're going to be going through in further detail in the rotation is the Abomination Limb, Army of the Undead, or Dead, and Unholy Assault. Abomination Limb pulling the target to you and doing massive cleave damage. Army of the Dead is a huge army of the dead, <laughs> who would have thought? And Unholy Assault is going to increase your damage done. So here we are in game, and we're going to actually look through the single target rotation first, and then look at Mythic Plus and AoE. I've put the spells nice and big in the center of the screen so we can have a look at them when going through the rotation. And this here is actually a weak aura add-on from a person called Luxfoss. I've put that in the description below in case you would like it. It's basically putting together all of your cooldowns and resources in one easy to see space on the screen. If you do like my UI, by the way, it's custom made by me and you can actually get this by joining my Patreon, which of course in turn helps support the channel and get these videos out for you. I only do this in my spare time, unfortunately. Unfortunately, um, I do actually have a main 9 to 5. So everyone that does sign up to the Patreon, it really does help support the channel and get these videos out. You also get access to a VIP channel in Discord where you can ask more questions or DM me on Patreon, of course, and also some WoW spreadsheets, etc. that I have made. So starting off from left to right, we've got Ru uh, Soul Reaper. It costs one rune. And you can see here we have six little green icons. And these are runes. As unholy, we have six unholy runes. We then also have runic power, which some abilities will generate and some will spend. So Soul Reaper, one rune 
on a six second cooldown, strike an enemy for Shadow Frost damage and afflict them with Soul Reaper. After five seconds, if the target is below 35% health, this effect will explode, dealing additional damage to the target. If the enemy that yields experience or honor dies, we're going to gain Runic Corruption. Then we have Death Coil. This is our main spender for our Runic power. Fires a blast of unholy energy at the target and one additional nearby target, causing damage to an enemy or healing an undead ally for a certain amount of health. Increases the duration of your Dark Transformation. That is this cooldown here. More on that shortly. We've then got Clawing Shadows, dealing damage and causing a festering wound to burst. So, a bit more on that. Up here at the top of the talent tree in Unholy, you can see we've got Festering Strike. Replaces Rune Strike, costs two runes, striking the target with damage and infects the target with two to three festering wounds. A festering wound is a pushlant lesion that will burst on death or when damaged by scourge strike dealing damage and generating free runic power. How lovely. <laughs> so you then see we've got scourge strike. If you're thinking well where is it then? To make things more complex scourge strike is actually replaced by clawing shadows which remember is this one here we're talking about so if you hear anyone talking about scourge strike you can see in blue writing at the top that is replaced by clawing shadows so it's a bit confusing but basically we don't have scourge strike anymore we have clawing shadows our festering strike and some of our other abilities are going to generate festering wounds on the target when we then use clawing shadows that's going to cause those festering wounds to burst and do more damage so again, just to recap there, Festering Strike makes wounds on the target, Clawing Shadows bursts them, we don't have Scourge Strike, it's replaced with Clawing Shadow. The next one is Outbreak. This one is going to do damage to nearby enemies, and it's actually going to inflict them with a Virulent Plague. Another charming description there. We've then got our Summon Gorg Gorgoyle, <laughs> Gargoyle, um, Summon a Gargoyle into the area to bombard the target for 25 seconds. The Gargoyle gains 1% increased damage for one every one runic power you spend, and this is going to generate 50 runic power. So basically, you can see then it's generated some runic power, and we've um, summoned the Gargoyle. Basically then, to recap on there, the Gargoyle gains 1% increased damage for every one runic power you spend. So when your Gargoyle is up, you want to spend as much runic power as possible in that window to make the Gargoyle, not the Gorgoyle, do more damage. Clawing Shadows again, it's on there a second time for a reason. Festering Strike, that's the one at the top of the talent tree we've spoken about. And then again, Death Coil is already on there. Let's now talk about our cooldowns. We've got Army of the Dead, summon a legion of ghouls who swarm your enemies fighting for, you know, whoever they can. Death and Decay, we can put this down on the floor, corrupts the target ground causing damage to anyone in the area. While you remain in it, your clawing shadows will also hit up to seven enemies near the target. And that's our clawing shadows, remember. Another thing to note on Death and Decay is Unholy Ground, this talent over here. Gain 5% haste when you remain within your Death and Decay. So when you are standing in it, you are going to actually gain some haste as well and attack faster. We've then got Dark Transformation. Your ghoul deals damage to five nearby enemies and transforms into a powerful undead monstrosity, granting them 100% energy and the ghoul's abilities are empowered to take on new functions. Basically, over here, we can raise dead and you should do this before you go into combat. This is a little minion that we can have up at all times and we can actually have it transform in to this Limb Breaver with the Dark Transformation cooldown. We've then got the Gargoyle, of course, we've spoken about. Unholy Assault, strike a target doing damage, inflicting the target of four festering wounds. So this will also inflict, inflict those wounds and sending you into an unholy frenzy, increasing damage done. We've then got the Empower Rune Weapon, again, empowering our rune weapon. And lastly, Apocalypse. And this is going to, again, burst wounds. Again, you can see we can't use it because we haven't got any wounds up. It's going to burst wounds, summoning an army of the dead for 20 seconds for each festering wound you burst. So a lot of abilities there. It is not the simplest spec around, but let's have a look how we're going to put it together into a rotation as simply as possible. So first things first, before we go into combat, of course, raise your pet, um, your ghoul. Get that up before going into combat. And one thing to note here, on this rotation, is that you shouldn't really be looking at it as a rotation. In other words, we're not going to use these in order and then rotate back to the start. But the way you should actually look at this now is it's a priority list, meaning this is number one priority based on certain conditions, and we're going to go down the list. So if we attack our target, the first priority is using Soul Reaper if the target is going to go below 35% health, within the next five seconds. If it's already below 35% health, great. 
if it's at 36% health, you could probably be pretty confident that it's going to go below 35% in the next five seconds. Remember, after five seconds, if the target is below 35% health, it's going to explode. So you want to use it at 35% or below, or just before it hits 35% health. After that, we have Death Coil. This is our main runic power spender. Remember, it also increases the duration of Dark Transformation, which is the one where we transform our Ghoul. So the priority at this point on the rotation is that if we have over 80 runic power, you can see right now I've got 75. If we've got over 80, then we use it. You'll also see that sometimes, perfect timing actually, sometimes it will proc with this little purple icon. Basically, what that is, you'll see then it hasn't actually used any runic power when I use it. So what that is, is it's here, Sudden Doom. Your auto attacks have a chance to make your next death coil cost no runic power. So at the second point in the rotation, basically use your death coil if you're at or above 80 runic power, which we are, we've got 100, so we can use it next, or if you get a free one. You'll also notice this purple skull icon is now up. That is death rot, death coil, the one again we've just used, and epidemic, which we're not using in this, we'll use it in Mythic Plus, so just death coil here. Debilitate your enemy, applying death rot, causing them to take 1% increased shadow damage up to 10% from you for 10 seconds. So it stacks up to 10. If death coil or epidemic can shoot sudden doom, it stacks twice. So if you use a free one, this will apply twice. If you get a free one, it'll apply twice. Another thing to mention is Rotten Touch. Sudden Doom, again, it's this free proc on your Death Coil. Sudden Doom causes your next Death Coil. So using the free one causes your next Death Coil to also increase your Clawing Shadows damage against the target. It's already getting quite confusing. It's not a simple rotation, as I mentioned. Let's just recap so far. We're going to use Soul Reaper as a first priority if the target is about to be or is already at below 35% health. We're then going to use Death Coil if we get a free one proc or if we're at 80 runic power and above. Remember that you can get stacks of Death Rot by using it and that'll kind of happen anyway throughout the rotation. And after using a free Death Coil, not your usual ones, your usual ones, but only when it procs a free one, your next Clawing Shadows, the next one, will then obviously be empowered as well. So when we use that, we're then going to get a buff and it's going to empower our Clawing Shadow. So if Rotten Touch is active, which again is this one, Sudden Doom calls your next Death Coil to increase your Clawing Shadows damage against the target. So we use it. You can then see on the target they have Rotten Touch and Scourge Strike, which is actually Clawing Shadows, is increased. And we can use that then, and that'll do more damage to the target. So if that Rotten Touch is up on the target, after using our free Death Coil, we can then um, use Clawing Shadows as our next priority. After that, we're going to use Outbreak, and that's to make sure that we're keeping up Virulent Plague. You can see again on the target, we've added that dot or damage over time. So we want to use Outbreak to keep that up. At the next point in the rotation, the thing I'm going to do is pretty much using our summon gargoyle. So when we summon the gargoyle, we're actually going to do it with our other cooldowns. And the cooldown order is going to be Army of the Dead, then Death and Decay, then Dark Transformation, then Summon Gargoyle, then Unholy Assault, then Empower Rune Weapon, and then Apocalypse. You're going to use these cooldowns in this order. When possible, you do have two stacks of Death and Decay, so do try and keep it up at all times. So you can see here I've got all these minions up, and we're basically synergizing our cooldowns together to do the most damage. And again, it's going to be in this order here. So Army of the Dead, then Death and Decay, Dark Transformation, Gargoyle, Unholy Assault, Empowering Weapon, and then Apocalypse. It's a lot, I know. Don't forget, when Gargoyle is up, that you need to be spending as much runic power as possible. So when your Gargoyle is up, you can use pretty much as much of your Death Coils, um, so three of them, for example, to spend all of that runic power and make the Gargoyle do more damage. So that's at that point. When you see the gargoyle at that point, what I'm really saying to do is use your cooldowns. And then after that, on the rotation or the priority list, it's going to be Clawing Shadows. So it's here. If we've got um, Soul Rot on the target, remember, from our free one. If it's not on the target, we skip that step here, do these, and then it's going to be Clawing Shadows to burst those wounds. If there's no wounds on the target, use Festering Strike to make wounds on the target. You can see I've just used it twice and there's now six on there. The priority for using Festering Strike is if there's three or less wounds on the target. And then after that, just use your Death Coil. And if you've got no Runic Power and there's truly nothing else left to use, then use your Festering Strike. 
So let's just recap on the rotation then. Use Soul Reaper at 35% health or below, or if it's about to hit 35% health. Use Death Coil if it's got a free one procking, or you've got 80 or more runic power. Use your Clawing Shadows after using a free Death Coil. Use your Summon Gargoyle and your cooldowns. Use Clawing Shadows, even if Death Rot isn't on the target. Use Festering Strike to make Festering Wounds on the target, especially if there's free or less on there. And then use your Death Coil uh, as a fill-out spell if you can. If not, if you can't got any runic power, use your Festering Strike. So when you look at it like that, it is actually a bit simpler. And that is pretty much the single target rotation. Once more then, 35% health for under, Soul Reaper, Death Coil, over 80 runic power. And if there's a free one up from Sudden Doom, using that free one will actually put Rotten Touch on the target, which is empowering your Clawing Shadows. Use that at that point. Keep Virulent Plague up without break. Use your Summon Gargoyle and your cooldowns, keeping up Death and Decay when possible. So we're going to use all these cooldowns. Spending free death coils when our gargoyle's up so that we can spend as much runic power to empower our gargoyle. Otherwise, use your chlorine shadows, use your festering strike to make the wounds, use your death coil if you haven't got anything else to press. Now we're going to move on to Mythic Plus, and things are going to change a bit and get even more confusing. I must say, Frost is definitely an easier spec to play. You can see the talents changing over here. Um, this is the Mythic Plus build, but yes, Frost is definitely easier. I do have guides um, for all three specs, so do check out Frost if you are interested in something a bit more straightforward. But Unholy is really, really fun when you get used to it, with all the, the minions, etc. So the main thing we're changing over here is um, we're adding in Unholy Blight, surrounding yourself with a vile swarm of insects for six seconds. I must say, the descriptions on Unholy kill me. Um, stinging all nearby enemies and infecting them with a virulent, with the virulent, virulent plague, which is from your outbreak spell as well. That's the same virulent plague. And an unholy disease that deals damage over 14 seconds. There's also defile. Defile the targeted ground. This is replacing your death and decay, by the way. Dealing damage to all enemies over 10 seconds. While you remain in defile, your scourge strike will hit seven enemies near the target. Every second, if any enemies are standing in defile, it grows. So... In the Mythic Plus build, Scourge Strike is not replaced by Clawing Shadows. We keep it as Scourge Strike, just to make things again even more confusing. And we also gain another cooldown called Abomination Limb over here. Sprout out an additional limb as you do, dealing damage over 12 seconds to all nearby enemies, dealing reduced damage beyond five targets. Every one second, an enemy is pulled to your location if they are further away from eight yards. The same enemy can only be pulled once every four seconds. Gain runic corruption instantly and gain every six seconds. Okay, so a bit of a different rotation here. Basically, of course, always use your raid, raise dead and get your minion up before combat. Same as in raid and single target we do have a new little cooldown or buff should i say called plague bringer scourge strike not clawing shadows <laughs> this time scourge strike causes your disease damage to occur 100 percent more quickly for 10 seconds so our number one priority is keeping that up on the target so you can see here then the buff that's plague strike it's actually on you not your target if that makes sense um, so you want to keep this up at all times, um, meaning that we're doing more damage over, you know, the same period of time. After that, we're going to use our Unholy Blight. It's only on a 45 second cooldown. You can see that Vile Insect Swarm there. Let's use our Outbreak if any targets are missing Virulent Plague. You can see, of course, that the Virulent Plague is on both targets here because of Unholy Blight. But say if there was an enemy over there I've missed, we can then use our Outbreak to get that enemy and get it up on a Virulent Plague as well, where Unholy Blight may have missed it and they weren't in the area. After that, we're going to cast Dark Transformation. If Dark Transformation is active, we're going to use our Empower Rune Weapon. And again, if Dark Transformation is active, use your Unholy Assault cooldown. And then we're going to use our Apocalypse on the enemy that has the highest amount of Festering Wounds. This one over here has none. This one has four. So we're going to use our Apocalypse on this one. Remember, it's also going to be Bursting Wounds with Apocalypse. Hence why we're using it on the one with the highest Festering Wounds. Because we get more army per wound. We're going to use Defile, which is a lovely grey vile area. Uh, using that, of course, to make damage in the area. And then you, know, you may have noticed then that Epidemic had a proc on it. Epidemic causes each of your virulent plagues to flare up, oh dear, dealing damage to the infected enemy and an additional 691 shadow damage to all other enemies near them and again increases the duration of dark transformation. So again, virulent plague is the one that's from your unholy blight and outbreak. 
an epidemic is going to flare that nasty infection up and it's going to cost 30 runic power. This is basically what we're using instead of death coil. And what you'll notice is that we have sudden doom still. Our auto attacks have a chance to make your death coil or epidemic cost no runic power. So same as we did before, when you see it light up like this, use it because it is for free. Now, if you can see that I can't use it, remember we do need the virulent plague on there to get that plague to flare up. So if you come to a point where you're like, oh, I can't use it, that's because you've let your virulent plague fall off. Naughty, naughty. Then lastly, we can use our abomination limb cooldown. And then pretty much after that, it's just going to be using epidemic and scourge strike and if you really need to, because you've got no Festering Wounds on there, um, using Festering Strike as well. And that is pretty much it. That is the rotation for Mythic Plus. So again, using Scourge Strike to keep up Plague, bring a buff on yourself. Use your Unholy Blight to spread that Plague, using Outbreak if it's missed any. Use your Dark Transformation, and if Dark Transformation is up, use your Empower Rune Weapon and the Holy Assault. Then using your Apocalypse on the enemy with the highest Festering Wounds, because it's going to do more minions per festering wound keep defile up use epidemic at high runic power um of course with virulent plague on there and if you get a free one then use your abomination limb cooldown and then it's just going to be using um scourge strike for bursting wounds and festering wound um to get a any festering wounds that may not be there. And that is how you do the Mythic Plus rotation. If you're wondering about the set bonus from this tier, it's really simple. You're basically going to be summoning extra mobs with your Apocalypse. So if we use Apocalypse, you can see here, um, we have a Magus of the Dead here. And the two and four set bonus are basically spawning more Magus of the Dead and empowering them to empower you. That's pretty much it is worked all into this rotation here to accommodate the two and four set of this season. If you don't yet have your tier set bonus, don't worry, this rotation is still perfect. And if you do have the set, well, then you're good to go. And that's it, guys. You should now hopefully know what you're doing in Unholy Death Knight for season four of Dragonflight in patches 10.2.6 and 10.2.7 and beyond. Please, if you are still struggling, watch this video again. If you're specifically focusing on single target and raiding, just watch that section a few more times and, you know, take it slow. What I always advise with especially complex rotations like this is that, you know, maybe focus on, you know, getting your cooldowns in order and going on to the training dummies, doing some follower dungeons, maybe just doing like the first half of the rotation and getting that down and then be like, right, okay, and then do the next chunk and then try and sort of put it all together like a jigsaw puzzle. It is one of the more difficult rotations, I would say, um, out of all the different classes and specs. And like I said earlier in the video, you can join the Patreon if you need any more help or want to import my UI. You can also join my Discord, where we've got really awesome community of helpful players and a lot of veteran players that do actually enjoy helping new um, new players to new specs and WoW, etc. If you're looking for other specs like Frost Death Knight, click this playlist here. It's got all of the PvE Season 4 specs in it with guides, and I've also done PvP and dungeon guides, should you need those as well. Good luck and have fun in Season 4.